Hey, hey, welcome back, Sons of Rust. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and today we are talking about a personal favorite of mine, which is the Iron Priest, a.k.a. Tech Marine, a.k.a. Primaris Tech Marine, a.k.a. Master of the Forge. These guys have been under the radar for a while, uh, but depending on the type of list you're building, they can be incredible. But we'll get to that. First, let's talk about the model. What you're seeing on the screen right now is my personal model that I just painted up. I call him... Tormund, the Iron Wolf. Uh, it's a name from Game of Thrones, not going to lie. It's just a cool name. Sounds tough. Kind of like a Viking. So this is the Primaris Tech Marine. I actually spend the 20 points on Master of the Forge upgrade. But we'll get into all that. We'll deep dive into that. But first, just look at the model. This is a conversion. I took the classic Space Wolf helmet. Some people think it looks like a Skaven sort of rat-like helmet. But it's a wolf. <laughs> We did the half and half color scheme, and instead of the Primaris Tech Marine model, I believe this is the one from the Iron Hands, the named character, and I just swapped the head. I think the axe is awesome, the cog axe. I love his uh, claw machine arcade <laughs> arm that reaches down. And then to his side, he also has kind of a welding fusion plasma arm of some kind, and then the classic heavy bolter, which has its own... What is it? It's a forge bolter. So if you didn't want to go the Primaris route, here is the fine cast, or maybe even plastic. This is actually pretty new. I think it's plastic. Iron Priest for the Space Wolves in normal power armor. It's an awesome model. I mean, it's pretty recent. He's got the great looking thunder hammer. He's got the backpack with the wolf head as the claw. And he's got a little frost pistol. So if you're going the firstborn route, and you just really want a thunder hammer and you don't want to pay the points for him to be Primaris, this is the way to go. This model is really good actually and I like it a lot. I just really like the Primaris version better. You know me guys, I'm, I'm new school when it comes to Space Marines. I, I like the proportions better. I like that they're taller and broader and I like their weapon loadout. I really love that assault heavy bolter that he has on his backpack. So let's dig into some lore now that we've taken a look at the models. Masters of the Forge, the War Engine, and the Machine Spirit, the Iron Priests maintain the weapons and technology of the Space Wolves. Without the Iron Priests, the Sons of Rust would eventually be reduced to wearing plated mail instead of powered suits of armor. Without the Iron Priests, the Warriors of Fenris would be unable to take to the Star Sea in their great spacecraft. It is the Iron Priests who forge each blade and bless each bolter, and they who appease the spirits of plasma and flame. Theirs is a brotherhood older than the chapter itself. Amongst the natives of Fenris, each tribe's smith will worship the gods of iron, legendary figures said to reside within the volcanic islands adrift in the boiling sea. Three things are known of these gods. That molten metal runs through their veins, that fire dances at their command, and that they in turn worship at the altar of the brazen god of technology. A particularly gifted young Fenrisian smith may make a lonely pilgrimage to the smoke-shrouded Isles of Iron, determined to see these gods with his own eyes. Those with the wit and strength to complete the arduous journey do indeed meet the living gods, for this is the guise the Iron Priests maintain when dealing with mortal men. Each pilgrim is put to work in the lava forges, his skin and sweat sizzling as he labors to create the finest of swords within the mouth of the volcano. His dexterous hands are covered with bulky iron gloves, and his muscles scream with exertion as he transforms the crude metal around him into deadly tools of war. This is known as the test of the iron gauntlet. Should his work still be of masterful standard, and should he manage to pass the arduous trials laid before him, then he may be taken on as an apprentice and initiated into the space wolves. Later he will journey to Mars, the red planet, where he will learn the ways of the machine under the tutelage of the arcane and insular Adeptus Mechanicus. Only once has he fully embraced the mysteries of the Omnissaya will he be allowed to return to Fenris and take his rightful place amongst the Iron Priest, bringing growling engines of war to life in the service of his chapter. Alright, so right off the bat, first thing longtime wolf players will notice is that the Iron Priests are no more. You can just take a Tech Marine. It's the same exact stats, just you gotta go by the, nor the new name. So that's why this is the Iron Priest slash Tech Marine video. So... Taking a look at it, he's 80 points for the Primaris Tech Marine, and that's the one I'm mainly going to talk about because that's the one I recommend, guys. You get the extra attack and the extra wound. You get the better 
gun. His weapon sure isn't a thunder hammer. So if you really desperately want a thunder hammer, you do got to go the route of a normal uh, power armored space marine, firstborn. But for now, yeah, I'm going to talk about the Primaris one because I think that's where your points are best spent. And he is just a beast. So let's take a look at it. He's 80 points without the Master of the Forge upgrade. He heals a vehicle D3 at the end of the movement phase like normal. Like lots of armies have that ability with tech marines or tech priests. What makes him nice is he has this forge bolter, which is more handy than you think. It's a 24 inch range, assault three, strength five, minus one AP, two damage. And whenever the bear shoots, it can make attacks with this weapon, even if it also makes attacks with pistols or grenades. So he can actually dish out quite a bit of shots, which is really nice because he also has a grav pistol which is 12 inches, pistol 1, strength 5, minus 3, damage 1. But if against an enemy that's a save of 3 plus or better, the attack has damage characteristic 2. So you can actually put down some primaries or, you know, two wound marines pretty, pretty handily now. His axe is melee, strength plus 2, minus 2 AP, flat 2. So strength 6, minus 2, flat 2. That's kind of a sweet spot. Everyone likes minus 2, flat 2. It's a good place to be in combat. And then he also has a servo arm. Each time he fights, no more than one attack can be made with each servo arm. And so the servo arm is strength times two, so strength eight, minus two AP, flat three damage. So, you know, it's pretty mean. That little arcade, <laughs> that little arcade hand claw comes down and just plucks your head off your shoulders, I guess. It crushes your head. So let's go through his stats. He's movement six, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill two plus, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Wounds 5, Attacks 4, Leadership 8, Save 2+. plus. Pretty nice, pretty normal. If you've known Tech Marines in the past, they've always had that nice 2+, plus save, and Ballistic Skill 2+. plus. That's kind of their go-to. But now that he's Primaris, he's got that 4 attacks, which would be 5 in the first round of combat, and he also has 5 wounds. So it makes him nice and beefy. So here's how I load mine out, guys. Keep in mind, this is my new Warlord. Not Ragnar, not Bjorn. I run him as the warlord of the Cult of the Red Wolf, my personal Space Wolf chapter. So I give him the Armor of Russ, which is a save of 2 plus and 4 plus invulnerable. And then at the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit with engagement range of the bearer. The unit is not eligible to fight this phase until after all eligible units from your army have done so. You know it, you love it. Armor of Russ is great. You could give him the Beowulf Relic which would make him minus one to hit and minus one to wound. Pretty good. I also see the benefit of maybe just giving him adamantine mantle for a five plus feel no pain. Just give him a five up shrug. That could be super handy as well if he's your warlord and you're trying to keep him alive. So he's got the normal space wolf stuff, savage fury, all that. So here's where we go into the real meat of this model and why I think it, when I realized how good it was for my dreadnought heavy army, I'm never looking back. This guy is a must take. So you can spend 20 points to make him a master of the forge. And that unlocks the master of the forge special ability, which is each time this model repairs a model using its blessing of the old Messiah ability, this model regains up to three lost wounds instead of D3. So when he's repairing, he's repairing flat three wounds, which is whew, so nice, so nice. The other huge benefit is that if you make him the master of the forge and you make him a warlord, you can give him the warlord trait of awaken the machine spirits. In your command phase, this model can awaken one friendly, or no, this is what he just comes with. Sorry, guys. He just comes with awaken the machine spirits. In your command phase, this model can awaken one friendly chapter vehicle model within three inches. At the start of your next command phase, each time that vehicle model makes a ranged attack, add one to that attack's hit roll. Each model can only be awakened once per turn. So just one of your vehicles, one of your chapter vehicles, just plus one to hit with its ballistic skill. So that's going to help a lot when you're shooting through dense terrain or shooting at hard to hit things like Harlequins. And even if you're not, you just have two plus ballistic skill with your awesome Dreadnought. So super helpful, super helpful. What I was starting to think about was Warden of the Ancients. That is his special warlord trait that only he can take and only if he's master of the forge. While a friendly chapter dreadnought is within six inches of this warlord, add one to its strength and attack characteristic. So 
This guy has a six inch bubble of plus one strength and attack for my dreadnoughts. So let that sink in. I'm bringing him in a list with 11 dreadnoughts. That's three contemptor dreadnoughts, three redemptor dreadnoughts, three wolfen dreadnoughts with the ax and shield, murder fang, Bjorn. They're all getting an extra attack. The extra strength is okay. Uh, it's usually not making much of a difference since we're wounding on twos most of the time anyway, but that extra attack is, oof, it makes things so dangerous. We're talking about Redemptor Dreadnoughts with six attacks, hitting on twos because they're Space Wolves. It takes my army from being arguably my best combat army to being for sure if he's right there. He, not only is he healing them three wounds every time they get hurt, but he's giving them an extra attack as well. It's... It's a no-brainer. He's 100 points total with that loadout. The other thing you, I could recommend is if you have another hero uh, as well, like my Primaris Lieutenant that I bring, you put that right next to him and you give him the Rights of War. It's either Rights of War or Rights of Battle uh, Warlord trait. So you pay, pay a CP for an extra Warlord trait. And that makes it so that all chapter core units within six inches are obsec. So... Suddenly, all my Dreadnoughts are getting an extra Strength, Attack, and they're all Obsec. You see where the synergy really comes in here. And suddenly it becomes an army that has a little more tricks up its sleeve than people realized. Yes, it's a wall of Dreadnoughts, all with guns and good combat, but you don't realize it's getting buffed. You can't just put one Guardsman near that objective. You're going to have to outnumber with Obsec. You can't just drop 20 Storm Boys with your orcs on an objective because they're not obsec and suddenly that one dreadnought is. So there's a lot going on with this. I'd really like to hear if any of you guys run these guys. Even if you only had one powerful vehicle, he can give that vehicle plus one to hit every turn and heal it three if you need to. So I could see like a repulsor executioner having this guy follow it around or I mean even in other Space Marine armies. He's so good. I just really like him in my Space Wolf army. He could follow Bjorn around and heal Bjorn 3 or Murder Fang. There's a lot to this guy. There's a lot to him. So now I really just got to think about how I want to utilize him best on the battlefield. How I want to separate my units because I can't castle up too much. I can't just put 11 Dreadnoughts around him. That's my whole army. So a lot of times what I'm thinking is I go hard on a flank with Murder Fang all three Wolfen Dreadnoughts with the shield and axe. And maybe Ragnar. And that just creates this fist of Dreadnoughts with Ragnar hiding behind them, charging up the field. So you got three Dreadnoughts with their Blizzard shields held high to take in all the incoming fire and Murderfang and Ragnar right behind them because that way you can't target them. And that charges up one flank. There's not much in the game that wants to fight that. That can handle Imperial Knights. That can handle other vehicles, other monsters. I mean, between Murderfang, Ragnar, and those three Wolf and Dreadnoughts, they're ready to fight pretty much anything. Problem is, not many guns, so that's pure combat. They're just rushing up a flank. And then the main core of my army will be three Redemptor Dreadnoughts. My Warlord, the guy we're talking about right now, directly behind them, right next to him will be Bjorn, so that he's given out that bubble of reroll ones to the core Dreadnoughts. And then also back there is a Primaris Lieutenant who's given out reroll ones to wound to all those Dreadnoughts when they shoot. And he's also making them core. Or he's already they're already core. He's making them obsec. And then also, this is kind of where my list I'm tinkering with. Do I want three Contemptor Dreadnoughts all with Multi-Melter walking up with that as well? So they're all rerolling hits of one and wounds of one. They're obsec. They're getting the extra attack from my... Primaris Tech Marine Warlord or do I tinker with that and maybe bring instead of the three Contemptors a Venerable Dreadnought and a Leviathan Dreadnought and some I think it saves me enough points I can get some Fenrisian Wolves in there too so that's kind of what I'm working with the Leviathan is scary and still viable because it dropped in points a lot the problem is it's not core so it's not going to reroll ones to hit it's not going to reroll ones to wound and it's not going to be obsec with that Warlord trait that being said, I can hit him with the plus one to hit special ability that this Primaris Tech Marine grants, which will make it feel more like the original Leviathan, hitting on twos with all that Storm Cannon Array shots. So I can still kind of have an old school scary Leviathan that hits on twos with all those shots, 
but it's not going to have any rerolls. So its efficiency has dropped quite a bit. And I really think with the new, more powerful multi melters that three contemptor dreadnoughts, nine wounds, five up in roll, core with all the rerolls and obsec and all that, three contemptor dreadnoughts just might be the way to go. It makes my army a bit copy and paste in terms of three contemptors, three redemptors, three wolfen. But I mean, I'm taking this to a tournament, guys. So I'm min maxing quite a bit here. I'm trying to not only show up with my best painted army but maybe bring home the you know number one <laughs> gotta try to win for for russ so that's what i'm thinking i think it's three redemptors three contemptors bjorn and the two characters on foot which is the primaris tech marine and the primaris lieutenant uh pushing up the field just a big ball of death you don't want to fight that you also don't want to get shot by all that multi-melter bjorn also is rocking a multi-melter so lots of multi-melters everywhere and then the repulse, not repulsors, redemptor dreadnoughts themselves are loaded out pure DACA. So, you know, it's my, it's my main shoot. It's my whole shooting phase really. And then if you decide you want to fight them or I finally get to combat, all of those dreadnoughts are getting an extra strength and an extra attack from my new Primaris tech Marine warlord, the master of the forge Tormund, the, Iron Wolf. So very, very excited, if you can't tell, <laughs> for my new model. We painted him all up, got him based with all his snow. He's ready to rock. He's ready to lead the cult of the Red Wolf to the promised land at this tournament. And guys, I'm going to be vlogging at this tournament. I'm going to give you recaps, show you how the wolves did. Uh, please comment down below if you use an Iron Priest or, you know, the new name, the Tech Marine. <laughs> and how they do for your battles i know a lot of people don't run just pure dreadnoughts like i do but a lot of people still run dreadnoughts or vehicles like maybe one of the space wolf flyers and giving that plus one to hit and healing it when you need to would still be really good so i'm a believer i think for 100 points you could you could definitely find worse this guy is a great leader for my army and we're going to see how this does. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. Tell your Space Wolf buddies or tell your buddies who have to play against Space Wolves all the time to go ahead and give us a listen. Because they might learn, you know, by reverse engineering what I'm saying, how to beat the Space Wolves. <laughs> all right, Sons of Russ, tune back in. Uh, I'm going to have more of these churning out. And, oh boy, the Space Wolves are going to a tournament. And we will see how that goes. Wish me luck, guys. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. Till next time. See ya.